so uh, good evening everyone i welcome you all in our today's session uh, topic of our session is management of cervical cancer screening and hpv vaccination during and after the covid-19 pandemic let me introduce our facilitator today dr kosar nias he is the founder of bio services uh, Dr. Niaz uh, has a more than decade of experience in education and research with specialization in development of cancer biomarks. Dr. Niaz is proactively engages in creating mass awareness about common diseases in women and girls and that is preventable in nature through continuous public engagement programs. In this capacity he has participated in various scientific conferences and workshops across the country as a speaker and a panelist. Welcome, Dr. Niaz. Over to you. Yeah, thank you for your kind introduction, and and uh, I'm happy to share my experience and you know knowledge whatever I have today with all of you. And we rightly said today's like topic is very justified, you know, keeping in mind this COVID nineteen surge again. So, but the whole idea is to what new strategy we need to adopt. or uh, during covid time or post covid time also and like you know I, i would like to highlight more on those part today so we all know uh, we aspire to you know get this uh, cervical cancer free future for women and girls in as soon as possible but the goal is really challenging and according to who uh, they are pushing a lot to you know to adopt new uh, screening strategy treatment guidelines are Uh, they are according to who they also recommending palliative care you know and as we all know we have a vaccine for this so these four components are very important as far as this cervical cancer elimination is concerned so i'd like to highlight uh, more today you know on screening and vaccination part and what are the strategy that has been adopted so far by global leaders in developing developing countries and what more need to be done so we all know this uh, uh, cervical cancer in india is very common and we are losing almost you can say uh, seven to you know eight minutes on average we are losing one woman across the country uh, you know so this is quite alarming and the irony is though it's 100% preventable why we are still continuously you know losing this uh, uh, you know uh, beautiful women across the country so we need to take a intervention as soon as possible and we all come together to eliminate this cervical cancer as soon as possible uh abir bhai services foundation is like you know serving this community for 10 years in last 10 years we are mainly focused on you know raising the awareness because most of the time we have seen awareness is uh, you know you can say key for prevention actually awareness is directly linked to the prevention as far as this cancer survey is concerned so even if we are uh, aware of some sometimes but it's not affordable that is another concern even if it is affordable it is not acceptable by the community so the whole idea is how to make this you know screening tools or the vaccine that is available with us for all so that we can eliminate this cervical cancer so just to give a brief background about my educational background uh, so far so uh, i'm graduated uh, and post graduate from aligarh muslim university the last degree that I I you know taken this masters in biotechnology in 2003, and then uh, moved to this uh, Delhi and registered with Jamia Millia Islamia as PhD program, and the entire uh, research was on cancer cervix, like HIV infected and non infected uh, cervical cancer in collaboration with National Institute of uh, Cancer Prevention and Research. So it's ICM Institute and mainly dedicated for uh, you know uh, research on common cancer like. oral breast as well as cervix so my research area was in the cancer cervix so i am happy to share more experience that whatever i have in last you know one decade and what of the knowledge that i have acquired during this training uh, in a various uh, you know organizational level and how i am like connecting day to day basis with the society that i also like to share uh, in my presentation today after post uh, uh, i am mean, a phd Uh, we all opt for the post doctoral fellow i was lucky to get a chance to work with this group uh, and in iupi indian high school of medicine 
So in, in, in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, program also as a postdoctoral fellow, I work on this uh, management of HIV and how to develop monocular antibody to block the HIV infection. Because we, we all know uh, in case of uh, cervical cancer, also those who are infected with HIV, there's a more, uh, you know, uh, revised treatment guideline need to be aware, uh, to make, make them aware, you know, knowing that they are at the high uh, risk, you can say, by this infection. So I got a chance to work on this area and know close more about how this HIV infected individuals are more prone to a lot of disease, not only uh, with the cervical cancer. The question is, whenever you go for any sort of training during PhD or post PhD, what to do next? That is always a question that I ask myself actually. So as an individual, what I can do, I always try to focus on those area. And you know, we all know every year on 4th of Feb, we, we celebrate, uh, you know, to raise the awareness globally on the cancer in general. So I strongly believe in that my capacity, whatever the knowledge that I have as a cancer researcher, I always try to, you know, uh, bridge the gap between science and society by regular uh, public engagement activity, you know, different, different research program in collaboration with uh, various institutions across the country. So this is what I aspire to contribute more and more in the area of research in near future also as individuals. So at a national level, we all know there are a lot of disease that is there already in the, you know, uh, at India level, like diabetes, cardiac, apart from this cancer and all. So to prioritize the cancer for the government also is very, you know, uh, sometimes not like easy as we uh, assume actually. So as an individual, we need to take more and more responsibility, you know, to contribute towards our society to make it, uh, you know, uh, live better actually. I always, uh, you know, uh, inspired by this, uh, you know, one statement that was there in uh, Aligarh Muslim University when I was, uh, you know, in high school. Enter to learn, leave to serve. So wh what does it mean is, uh, whenever you learn something, try to serve back to the community. And that is the whole, and that is how this foundation came into the existence. And you can clearly see over here, like this teal is cervical cancer awareness color. and we are regularly adopting one community based upon the data that is available by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. And with the help of digital uh, uh, you know, media, we are trying to reach to the community to raise the awareness in a single go, number one. And at the same time, we are also collaborating with the partner, those who are actually working into the field. And together, uh, we can see, you know, there is a chance to make a difference in the society that we aspire to see in, in near future. So this is one uh, aspect because collaboration is what is required and is the need of the hour today, not only with India, across the, across the border also, number one. Number two, what I mean from the collaboration is, it's not always between uh, non-profit board. It's always the high time to collaborate with the industry where the technology is there in, in the terms of, you know, the, the availability, av availability of the kit that we need as a self sapling that I'm going to highlight and throw light, some more light during the COVID, as well as uh, the uh, diagnostic kits available with the company. So collection kit, diagnostic kits, testing kit, you can say, as well as the vaccine that is available with the uh, pharmaceutical company. So they all need to come together with and align with the government policy to, to make it happen, to make this dream into the reality. So collaboration is what I'm inspired to, you know, more and more uh, in near future, uh, at least in 2020 and now onward. And other important aspect is we need to collaborate with the laboratory services also across the India so that we can provide affordable services uh, in terms of HVV testing is uh, concerned. So according to the today's topic, you know, the management of uh, common cancer is always a concern, not only about the cancer service, but other cancer also, because we all know in, 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 in India, especially, it's a huge uh, country. It's not, it's, it's not easy to handle the entire population at the same time as far as cancer burden is concerned. Not only cancer cells, but other cancers also, as I said. So among gynecological cancer, this uh, particular cancer cervix is quite manageable. And we have seen in recent past, wherever there is a clinical intervention, we can manage uh, this cancer cervix. So this one publication, again, shared by uh, ICMA Institute, India's public health care system prepared for cervical cancer, that is a question mark. And this is a big question that it was asked before the pandemic. And they have evaluated, you know, the facility of readiness from the fourth round of the district level 
household as facility you know survey that that is uh, dlhsr4 it's uh, this survey is available online right now the institute uh, all the groups that i can see over here it it was uh, yeah uh, i mean dr ravi merotra was there at, at that leading position at that time as a smart director and what they concluded uh, in this research paper before pandemic was infrastructure and staffing are large barriers to the screening at psc level which are crucial for referral you know of high risk patients especially so after uh, pandemic also what what we expect definitely i mean a lot of screening and vaccinations are put on hold because of this covid-19 pandemic and we have seen there a lot of change in practice in uh, you know in the area of gynecology oncology during this uh, uh, covid time so this beautiful paper also i'd like to quote to all of you you know during uh, covid-19 also how it's affected in the treatment of gynecological cancer patient both uh, both in the terms of you know uh, high risk group uh, uh, identification or as a prioritization of this particular and uh, reduce the hospital access and length of the stay is always a, a matter of concern so we all know like uh, cervical cancer is not only uh, hitting this india as well it's a global uh, issue and what according to who is if we do not act today death from cervical cancer will rise by almost 50% by 2040 so it's a high time to uh, pull up our socks and you know try to uh, do the maximum intervention that we can do and if we look at this hpv that is the main causative agent is sti sexually transmitted infection so if you look at the geographical location like whether it's uh, north america south america africa europe asia everywhere like you know particular type 16 and 18 is most common strain that uh, we have seen apart from this other 12 types are also there according to who and we have seen in our uh, pilot study also like not only 16 18 is a matter of concern but 33 31 45 35 uh, so on these are all risk factors are there and that lead you know to the cancer if it is not uh, uh, taken care of is not like screening is not done at the right uh, time actually so uh, the myth always uh, that we have seen in the community is whenever there is a infection they they feel like you know if uh, something is uh, hiv infection is positive if it is uh, uh, you know under high risk or low risk i'm i'm going to die because i'm going to you know get the cancer but th the fact that i wanted to share with all of you is it's hardly you know out of uh, whatever the infection is there first of all it not all infections are persistent most of the time you know uh, it will kill her by your body so most of what i mean most of the time is 80 to 90% it will kill her from the body if there is a viral infect infection in the first go that is one thing so in 10 10 to 20% of the remaining cases what we need to see whether it will progress to the invasive cancer or again it will re regress back to the normal so there is a high chance in in 10 those 10 to 20% cases also that it will come back to the normal rather than going to uh different stages of the cancer so nature has given enough time like 15 to you know almost 15 years 10, 10 to 15 years on average to get yourself checked and you know get the treatment possible that we have i'll, I'll just like to throw a little bit uh, you know background uh, molecular biology of this uh, because it's not a wonder process Wh whatever the gene that is there in the virus mainly e6 e7 are the oncogenes that is responsible for uh cancer cancer causing uh, you know gene you can say it and triggers uh, the oncogenesis and it it damages the tumor suppressor gene that we have and you, you can see it's it's a slow and gradual process from you know normal cell healthy cells to cancer cells that has been uh, seen under the microscopy by pathologist so what i mean from e6 e7 how it damages our uh, tumor suppressor gene the the fighting ability that we have after the infection this particular gene that is you know continuing fighting against uh that you know it prevent the formation of the tumor and this virus uh, once is infected with the cell is not clear from the body what is do is it damage and you know our much i mean the host versus uh, viral infection that whatever the mechanism is there it's not you know we are unable to uh, fight back and that is the reason that, that uncontrolled cell division is there and that lead to the cancer so again having said that after the infection uh going from you know directly jumping from this uh, normal cell to cancer cells it's take long time as i said and uh, it's well established uh, uh, in lot of literatures also and uh, for 
pathogenesis uh, of this particular virus and host and it already got the there has an uh, german scientist already got the nobel prize for this in 2008 so uh, normal to cancer we we are different stages are there in between that so frequently we Uh, you know ask uh, questions like this what will be a percent what will be you know the uh, regress rate or rather than you know going to the progress to other cervical cancer so again this particular paper is very very useful in sense that uh, they, there is a you know uh, chance like you can say 60% chance is case of cin1 similarly 33% chance in case of cin3 that will regress back to the normal that is a very good hope you can say the only condition is we need to check regularly as per guideline that i'll discuss uh, in the near uh, uh, you know future so the, as far as the screening is concerned what is the right test at the right age that is another question that we used to you know frequently faced in the field also and we discuss a lot among ourselves also so 21 years of the age is what the beginning of the screening is there and it will stop 65 if everything is normal but if something uh, is not normal at the age of 65 and another uh, 10 to 15 years screening is recommended so during this particular age group whatever the test option that we have like we have a cytology based test like uh, you know pap smear a dna based test like we we all know and we are going to talk more about uh, dna based testing today and why it is uh, important during this pandemic time that also we need to discuss uh, today a little bit so cervical cancer screening is uh, testing for pre cancer lesion number one and cancer among the women who may have no symptoms or feel perfectly healthy so till 30 21 to 30 pap smear is recommended alternate 3 years and after 30 till 65 if everything is fine according to alternate 5 years hpv dna testing is recommended so this is uh i'm not going to endorse any kit over here or the whatever you know uh, the technology that is available to collect the sample as far as this testing is concerned but yes whatever the option that we have as i said like vi a visual inspection by stk it, it, this test is easily available almost all uh, hospitals government or private or primary health care centers and pap smear test we all know but in liquid, in case of liquid based cytology and hpv testing because still it's uh, like little you know uh, metaphorically is not easily available across uh, you know the remote area across the country so what i mean by liquid based cytology or pap smear technology is almost uh, same principle is same but uh, in case of liquid based cytology all the cell that is collected by the breast transfer to the vials if the liquid buffer is there and the advantage of this is co testing is possible in case of liquid based cytology collected samples why because same sample will go to make the uh, slides and you can uh, any pathologist can review under the microscope to see if there is any changes at the cellular level at the same time that sample can be used for the dna testing as well so you don't have really call you know individual multiple times uh, let's say they want if 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 you are going to screen only by the pap test and and according to pathologist you, you the pap test is not normal then definitely you're going to call the patient actually and during pandemic time you, we all know we don't want to step out from the home because of number of reasons and we don't want to get an in, uh, infection from the uh, virus uh, that is uh, you know there in the hospital setup as well so this particular test at least if we recommend lbc rather than pap smear during pandemic that is a good option right now and if you move to hpv dna testing as a primary screening according to who uh, 2030 goal also that will be a ultimate option for us why because the interval between let's say day one screening today and when we are going to call that particular individual every, if everything is fine after 5 years so there is a good uh, you know number of gaps so it is easy to manage number and it is to follow up also at the same time uh you know after covid 19 time we have enough infrastructure to support this hpv dna testing as a primary screening uh that will you know uh, give additional uh, value addition to us to get this testing done with, with the help of uh, you know uh, any laboratory across across the country so we are very hopeful to adopt this hpv dna testing as a primary screening uh, in 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 year 2020 and onward also uh, during covid or post covid as well so uh you know management of screening programs during and after covid 19 pandemic again i have quoted one reference paper and what they have suggested is 
HPV cell sampling is gaining interest. That is very much uh, there in developed countries. And we in India, we also adopting this one. And you know, there is a lot of debate was there for last two, three, four, five years, you can say. Uh, clinician collected sample versus you know uh, self collected samples and there is a strong correlation uh, is there that uh, the self sample uh, you know uh, is equally good as compared to the clinician collector so why not we go for you know self sampling at our own uh, ease and convenience so considering that hpv sampling does not require you know traveling so we don't want to travel during covid time so let's see i mean if uh, if we uh, you know uh, if we can adopt uh, this particular testing during uh, COVID or post-COVID time as well. Yeah. So I would like to also highlight one research uh, article uh, that has been compiled by uh, one of volunteers from the bioservices and she recently completed her PhD program. What will be the uh, sample, clinical sample that we usually talk about, you know, as far as this uh, cell sampling is concerned. So urine, uh, you can say is like upcoming, it's already adopted by a lot of uh, developed countries, including China as well. So we need to validate this particular, you know, uh, biomarker in more and more in our Indian setup so that we can adopt this uh, urine as a cell sampling. And it, we all know to collect the urine and ship it to anywhere uh, across the country is not like problematic, you can say, as far as logic is concerned, as far as collection of the sample is concerned. So this is a real future that we are looking for and we are working into this uh, to develop this particular, you know, uh, tool or kit as 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 a as a, a future uh, screening tool in india uh, keeping in mind uh, uh, the covid time so dr so, nias one question sorry yeah, please. when you mentioned about this urine sample test is it something it's still in an idea or uh, as the work been started on this has the research uh, been started yeah research has been already started and she has done entire phd thesis on this particular uh, urine sample only that was like you know collected from different uh, hospitals in indian setup and if you look at the reference uh, literature the public uh, public domain is like in public domain is already available that most of lot of country you can say they already adopted this uh, urine as a uh, self sampling uh, sample and uh, for HPV DNA testing is concerned. How efficient was the result, Malab? Yeah, that that's what I'm uh, that what I'm saying. As far as uh, Indian scenario is concerned, we need to do more and more. You know, uh, uh, you can say more and more person need to be recruited and enough sample size need to be done. And at the same time, not only the simple sample, we need to also validate uh, the biomarkers that we're looking for for a for a specific and accurate diagnosis of this particular. Cancer. So we are working in this area uh, with the different collaborators, and we will be able to share the data that you're looking for uh, very soon, actually. Because I'm not going to uh, focus more and more whatever the other countries they have done. I we uh, uh, we always want to you know ensure that whatever the research that is there within the country, and if you want to promote any test, we need to done in our own population first, and then go ahead for this particular thing. So this is a kind of ongoing project that we're looking for. And hopefully, uh, within uh, you know limited time, we are going to come up with uh, good scientific evidence where this particular uh, urine sampling will be adopted as a screening for HPV DNA testing in future in India. I'm, I'm looking. I'm, I'm very hopeful for this uh, particular area. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, having said that, the cell sampling, we, we have like enough evidence now. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll share all these papers with uh, all of you to have a look. It's very like they, they have written is very user friendly way. Anybody can understand what they're talking about. So self sampling for HIV testing is what everybody's talking nowadays during pandemic time. And uh, there are n number of players that are coming up with the kit. Uh, whether to collect the uh, vaginal swab or uh, or 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 you know the urine, a uh, lot of uh, players are there. Those are already, already working to how to collect these samples and how to ship uh, from you know uh, from the home or from whatever workplace you are working on actually without going to any uh, you know clinical setup or hospitals uh, wherever you are. So it will be like very user friendly in future if we are going to adopt this self sampling. 
so it, it, irrespective of you know uh, whether it's from the high income countries or you know with the low income countries or whatever this hpv self sampling you know is is very much acceptable i can see uh, and and in india also we look forward to accept it by our own population so just to summarize uh, on this particular self sampling is concerned because the covid time i'd like to highlight more and more on this option that we have right now so that we are going to confident about this part and sem- and once we are confident about this part we are going to you know uh, share with our community as well in near future so that they will adopt this thing in, in near future so we all know what we already know is cervical cancer is one of the most common types of cancer among the women globally we all know right irrespective of low and middle income countries so early detection and treatment is what is required right now to prevent this uh, particular cancer and hpv testing is relatively or uh, new in most of the uh, country low resource setting cut is reasonably though it's a reasonably accurate method to do, you know for the uh, cancer prevention is concerned so we need to talk more and more about this hpv testing in near future rather than just focusing on the uh, you know uh, uh, cytology based tests or pap smear test so far that we have done so what are the new findings uh, you can say uh, again uh, you know uh, i would like to share this uh, data with you from the publication that i have shared with you uh, self sampling for this testing in, like in increase day by day and in in all population across the globe and it will adopted by most of the healthcare workers also and it will be easily you know uh, shipped door to door by healthcare worker also in near future that what uh, they have concluded in this particular uh, analysis that they have done the survey across the across the country so the important part is linkages to follow up testing and treatment after hpv sampling and after regular you know screening services uh, like is very limited as i said especially in india because we are still struggling as far as treatment is concerned those who are you know uh, detected with hpv positive what next that can be done for those patients actually so those area we also need to work more and more in collaboration with uh, uh, the policy makers as well as the government and private setup that we have so that whatever the a uh, numbers of patient that is screen after this testing they need to be get treated uh, under proper uh, guidance and proper uh, infrastructure uh, by us actually so we are uh, actually the basing uh, you know uh, between uh, the patient the individual as well as uh, the healthcare providers as, as a non not profit organization so another question is as far as self sampling is concerned what do new findings imply actually you know so uh, again again uh, we all refer who in most of the time because they are coming up with a policy for all the countries respective of uh, you know developed or developing countries so they recommended uh, also self sampling for hpv testing and i hope in near future uh, this more and more hpv testing will be done uh, during covid or post covid time also one pilot study that we have done before pandemic uh on self versus clinician collected sample uh, uh, from our, our foundation and uh, i would like to share the short story with all of you today also dr sumita mehta she is a gynecologist in babu jagjivana hospital and she is well known you know, gynecologist in in the government's uh, hospital more than 20 25 years of experience so we discuss a lot how to, before pandemic i'm i'm talking about how to increase this particular you know hpv uh, screening actually participation in in our community so at that time from india nobody was talking about uh, the self sampling or cell versus clinician collected what is the correlation what is the data also you know so at that time we because of the limited budget that we have at that time we collected a couple of samples but that is not you know statistically significant to report in any scientific journal so still we are looking for uh, some fund in this particular area if if it is available with us we will continue that study during pandemic or post pandemic time also and we were going to share our report uh, from india uh, where this uh, particular cell versus clinician collected sample is concerned and what is the you know confidence level what is the accuracy or specificity or sensitivity between the these two in indian population though we have lot of reference in this area from other countries having said that and there are enough publication that is there in the public domain to to adopt this particular self sampling technology but still we need to do lot of study lot of study from the india 
And one more thing, uh, uh, through our expert views column, what she recommended actually, even if you're vaccinated, uh, uh, you know, you have to go for the screening. And enough reason has been given on this particular article, you know, as expert views column, why screening is strongly recommended, even if you're vaccinated. So I request to, to go through this, uh, you know, uh, article that is written by her, and it is for all, all of us, so that we gain accurate information and then we share with our community what is the screening or vaccination uh, option that we have. So as far as vaccination, you all are educating and I'm not going to add much on this part, but yes, there are certain strategies that has been adopted during pandemic time that I would like to highlight. So first of all, it is safe and effective. That, that is uh, again the myth in most of the time in the community that is not safe. But because of the COVID, we all know vaccine works and it is safe and it saves lives. So two doses is more than enough if, uh, you know, 10 to 13 years after 13 to 26, three doses recommended. But single dose uh, vaccination is equally good and a lot of countries, they are validating and they probably they are coming up, uh, you know, data very soon so that single dose is enough if it is given at the right age. That That is very difficult to say right now because we don't have enough evidence on that part, but hopefully to reduce the cost, we can, you know, uh, go for the single dose in near future so that we can reduce the cost. Once you're going to reduce the cost, we have maximized the coverage as far as vaccination is concerned. So let us educate in the school and colleges at least so that in two dose, they are going to get good protection in near future in their life uh, up to 13 or 14 years maximum so that they are not going to pay an additional uh, you know one dose after uh, 13 years of age you can say so education is very important awareness is very important as far as vaccination right dose at the right age similarly we have covered right test at the right time and why we are going to adopt uh, self sampling as far as the screening is concerned so today i'm going to focus more and more on screening and vaccination in next session i'm going to focus more and more on treatment and palliative care because those are the area that always discussed uh, whenever we are going to you know talk to any local community uh, uh, level actually so it i just focus today for screening and vaccination as a strategy that need to be adopted during this pandemic time and post pandemic time also treatment and uh, palliative care is equally important uh, uh, during this uh, tough time so we'll 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 schedule another uh, presentation on that part. We all know we have uh, two vaccine available with us right now, and it's up to the choice of recommended by the clinician or you know individual uh, uh, choice. It's equally good, both vaccines are equally good. So, but uh, this Gardasilis is strongly recommended because it's covering another six, six and eleven low risk as well that cause warts in most of the cases in male or female both. Uh, other vaccine that is available, uh, that is nine valent, is not uh, in in India is not available, but it's available uh, in in the other developed countries, USA and all. So, uh, if you look at this uh, uh, vaccination, immunization, vaccination coverage globally, recently Australia is a very good example in front of all of us. Once they adopted this national immunization program, they, their their incidence rate as well as moderate is really, you know, goes down as, as uh, we have seen, you know, before they adopted this national immunization program. But in India, we still uh, did not adopt this national immunization program. So government need to take this action as soon as possible to put this actually vaccination under uh, national immunization program so that everybody will be vaccinated uh, under suitable age group. So Dr. Uh, as per recommendation by WHO. Yes, please. One more question here. So here we have written WHO guidelines published in 2014 recommend a vaccine schedule of two doses of HPV vaccine for girls aged between yeah. 9 and 13. Mm -hmm. So we are not talking about India specific, right? Over here. Yeah, in, it, this is in so, for India also and it's general also because yeah, this guideline is uh, for the, by published by WHO and this is for this is this all guidelines that we blindly follow globally. So why are you just mentioning girls over here? Malab, isn't this vaccination definitely in India? Boys are not getting the shots. So forget about boys, Malab, girls ko hi shots nahi mil rahe. But yeah. when you talk about Western countries, so we have eradicated they have eradicated cervical cancer, right? So mm -hmm. shouldn't they be using this term boys and girls together? I mean, uh, frankly speaking, a uh, uh, lot of programs have been initiated by uh, US government uh, 
and I have seen uh, in person actually when I was there as a postdoctoral fellow that uh, for screening of uh, breast and cervix, they have a special program. And, you know, those who are not, uh, you can say, financially uh, well off or uh, underprivileged uh, group of society, they are giving free vaccination, not only to the uh, this uh, particular, you know, uh, so-called uh, those who are uh, those who can you know afford actually those who can't afford also they are doing uh, a lot of you know uh, free vaccination drive long time now before this uh, guideline came into the existence actually so um, what i mean is if you look at the impact of the infection on both the gender like uh, let's say in both uh, male and female number of death is more in female as compared to male. But yes, it, yes it's equally yes. important to address both the genders. But this is the guideline according to WHO, that what I have quoted over here. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, so that's why since yeah. we are talking about WHO and it's an STI, right? Yeah, right. So both the, uh, vaccinating both the genders is equally important. Yes, I mean, uh, definitely, if we afford to vaccinate both the genders, let's say, at least we can initiate at our individual level within our family, within our community. If, if anybody can afford it, they must go for the vaccination of both the child, irrespective of the gender. That is, a, that is what we also, you know, uh, uh, advocating actually, provided if you can afford it. But at the national level, it's not possible. Why? Because if you look at the population and if you look at the impact of the disease uh, out of the, these two genders, first girls need to be addressed and the second phase boys also need to be addressed. That is one thing. So definitely uh, you are right because both the genders are equally responsible for this particular transmission of the virus because of STI in nature. So vaccination is always uh, better in case of, uh, at least I strongly recommend in case of uh, uh, boys. Why? Because testing is not easily available uh, as of now for boys as we, we have testing for uh, girls because we all know we have a lot of screening tools that is there that is in developed for the girls so we really don't know they are the uh, you know you can say uh, silent culprit of this particular you know transmission virus they knowingly or knowingly they don't know because they never ever screened actually so vaccine helps a lot to transmit a disease in near future if the only condition is, let's say, if we have enough resources or infrastructure to support that uh, drive, actually. That is that is the key question. So unless and until government will not take up this decision to vaccinate both, because most of the countries, they adopted for vaccination of both the boys and girls. We have seen that. And we have seen the impact of that but by vaccination drive as well. But in India, it's a big question right now. Keeping in mind, we, 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 uh, we as a country, we have a huge burden of disease uh, not only cancer, but other lifestyle-based disease or genetic-based disease as well. So let's see. Um, I mean, at least we can we can say to like uh, we are doing a lot of corporate lectures nowadays. If anybody can afford it, let let say I mean no, they, so they go question, for the vaccine for both the genders actually. So no, my question was just not India specific. Yeah. It was yeah. actually international level only. Yeah. That, uh, we know that the government is not taking up a vaccination in the schedule and mm. we, we don't have it at a subsidized rate mm. yeah i mean you are right a lot of countries they they adopted it they have done some pilot study, pilot study also for both the genders and few pilot studies has been done in north is done part uh, uh, by some uh, not for profit board only with the help of uh, uh, you know in collaboration with pharma companies uh, as well and we have seen that uh, this is what is rec uh, required actually in near future. But as of now, it's very difficult to say uh, whether these uh, boys also like, you know, they must be in included uh, or not, or, or when they are going to include, that is again uh, uh, a question mark actually. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one more important thing, according to this uh, published paper, uh, you know, uh, again by WHO, and they they are assuring that uh, you know, even if someone is vaccinated and then they didn't complete the vaccination part because of this COVID uh, surge, so they can go for you know the interval of uh, twelve to fifteen months. But it's strongly uh, recommended whatever the in interval gap was, you know, uh, 
before COVID, zero to six. Zero six maximum is a six months uh, gap from the first dose. But because of uh, this management of uh, you know vaccination program during or after COVID time, also we can go up to fifteen months. So we need to educate as well. So if someone is already vaccinated and because of the lockdown, because of the COVID uh, breakdown, if they are unable to get the another dose, at least they can wait up to twelve to fifteen months and then they can get their uh, another dose also equally good. And we have seen some evidence that antibody titer is also good even if they are vaccinated after twelve to fifteen months. So another important information I wanted to give it to all of you. So there is a, again another evidence uh, is there from this uh, European Federation of Colposcopy, uh, you know, and cervical colposcopy and pathology uh, regarding screening, vaccination, colposcopy, surgery, treatment. This is a very beautiful uh, paper that has been compiled by this uh, European Federation. So, uh, uh, survey study and what they concluded is in order to not to reduce the public health benefits of you know organized vaccination and screening programs the resumption of these activity must be carefully planned for months to come especially uh, during this time that we are facing in india as well ensuring the safety of both patients and healthcare uh, professionals also so what, what does it mean is we, we really don't need to stop this vaccination screening drive. We need to strategically plan if, let's say, if some of the state is not badly hit. Uh, and we have seen that equally not like all the states are equally contributed. Even in rural area, they are not very badly hit by uh, COVID-10. So at least for those population, we can still continue to you know, resume these uh, services as soon as possible. So uh, screening and vaccination program during COVID time, mainly decision is, you know, uh, need to be suspended or continue or resume screening and vaccination. Again, it depends upon, you know, uh, whatever the cancer burden across the different states uh, in India, I can say at least, and what are the transmission scenario is there and, you know, what is the disease burden is there as of now. So we can plan carefully. It's not like a blanket approach that, okay, stop the screening or vaccination across the country. It's not like that because India is a huge country. So we can, uh, you know, uh, recommend wherever there is, uh, there is a possibility, if there is no enough cases is there, we can, you know, resume these services uh, uh, as we have done uh, earlier also. So this is one important thing that uh, I wanted to highlight through this, again, WHO reference paper. So entire presentation, most of the time, I have taken WHO as a reference because WHO is closely working with uh, different countries across the globe and they are working on the strategy for the elimination of uh, cervical cancer. And we, we have witnessed uh, to that being you know, celebrated November 17th as the first uh, the cervical cancer elimination uh, day. And this year, uh, like, sorry, not this year, last year actually, uh, again, on 17th of the first anniversary, we have celebrated, we have seen a lot of participation across the globe that they come up with a lot of ideas or recommendations or strategies that adopted and need to be adopted in near future by different countries across the globe. So what next? So this is the last slide from my end. So what next I mean is uh, only HPV is not enough. Why? Because we, we have enough evidence that HPV infection is there, whether it's going to persist or it will going to clear by your body, it's a big question mark. So what are the other infection that is there in the vaginal microbiome is equally important. So we are looking of, of, uh, further, you know, to validate cost-effective uh, methodology to screen all common STIs, including other bacteria and fungus. Uh, as well, including HPV, so that we can assess uh, the risk of that particular individual, whether that particular individual is, you know, uh, going to clear the HPV infection in near future, or again, uh, um, it will persist or going to cause the cancer. So self collection of uh, the samples can, you know, again, a good strategy to go for the all STI screenings. Uh, because anybody can uh, collect the sample uh, at her or his privacy and send it to the lab or you know nearest uh, healthcare uh, primary healthcare centers and that test can be done and treatment can 
be taken care of. Right intervention is, uh, you know, required uh, uh, with the wealth of right test actually. So this is uh, all about like what I wanted to say today. And if if you have any question, I'm happy to answer that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Niaz. Thank you, Dr. Niaz. I actually did want to ask you something. Uh, yeah. Scientifically, they say that the screening should start at the age of 21. But in India and in a lot of countries, the age is 30 and above. Because they say women between the age of 21 and 30 will wash off the uh, infection on their own. So the when we go to do screening in the field, the directive we get from the government is that 30 years and above women you screen. So what is the evidence of women younger than 30 having cervical cancer and it being an advanced stage or anything like that? Is, is there any, is there any, uh, I, I mean, we know of Jane Goody and all, she was somebody yeah. who, who passed away at the age of 29 with cervical mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, what is the incidence of cervical cancer below the age of 30? Yeah, I mean, uh, in general, in general, we also, uh, uh, we also seen that during 21 to 30, uh, again, it's a sexually active phase of uh, sexually active phase of most of the like Indian uh, population, say young population. So number is very high in this group. Uh, at, at the same time, the resources that we have is very limited, number one. So most of the time, this particular virus is, you know, again, clear by your immune system because immunity is really good during this particular phase of life. So that is the reason most of the time we are facing challenge what to do in this particular age group. And specifically, HPV DNA testing is uh, not recommended uh, during this age group because we all know they, they will catch this STI infection and it will clear by the body, number one. Number two, if you look at the other infection that I have mentioned on this last slide, uh, the other bacterial or viral infection that equally contributing and, you know, damaging uh, the entire uh, vaginal microbiome during this uh, sexually active phase of life because we are not it's not necessarily that you are exposed to virus during this particular phase of life and cytology is recommended why because if there is any other co-infection not necessarily because of the hpv then also you'll see some changes uh, at the cytology level so 21 to 30 strategically Globally also, in India also, according to WHA again, they recommend to go for cytology-based testing only. And we are also advocating the same thing. So that if there is any infection, other infection that I'm talking about, this is what I'm, future project is all about. So that this particular test will be, you know, affordable to, uh, you know, all actually. That is our whole, whole goal to adopt more and more community and do screening at a very cost-effective rate. Because as of now, if you include four, three, four bacteria, common bacteria or virus or, you know, or fungal infection is there, the cost will go roughly, you know, you can say around 10,000 rupees by, by different molecular tests that is available with us. But if we come up with the indigenous product for STIs, maybe uh, we can go for code testing along with the cytology for this age group as well. So again, let us stick to cytology based screening, considering that virus will clear during this age group uh, till ages of 30. So I, I guess I answer your question uh, yes. at this point of time. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I have one more question though. Sure. Um, the self sampling kits will be LBC, right? There is no other, they are obviously LBC testing. And uh -huh. that certain cost involved yeah. in that right, right. So in India that is only it will only work for the urban public that they can do self sampling so what do we do in the in the field what do we do with 70 percent of the women in India how do we get self sampling kits to them or how do we get them screened during the pandemic uh, we has like we have seen like you know uh, in recent past not you cannot you say you say just in the last two years after covid 19 outbreak 
as far as self sampling kit is concerned a lot of company they have invested including uh, urine self sampling kit as well so let us uh, not confused with the liquid based cytology uh, lbc test because lbc again uh, is is little uh, expensive why because most of the time uh, that particular kit is you know uh, aligned with fully automated uh, system where there is a high burden you can say irrespective of urban or rural population if there is any tertiary care hospital or laboratory reference laboratories there that liquid based cytology kit is entirely different uh, package actually in 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 as a whole actually but as far as hpv dna testing is concerned uh, there are some kit that is uh, that is available at a very affordable rate and that is what going to be a game changer if we are going to adopt self sampling kit as a urine or as a normal sample with anal swab sample so that collection kit is entirely different from liquid based cytology platform that has been promoted long time in india for last 10 years say uh, because this lbc is not new to indian market we all know and a uh, lot of companies they they promoted this liquid based cytology across the country and adopted by both uh, rural and urban population based upon the availability of the laboratory services or hospital tertiary care hospital lab if it is available there so what we are going to do as a not for profit board we are going to uh, you know opt for an option where uh, we are not going to dependent on this particular kit that is already there in the market as far as lbc testing is concerned liquid based cytology is concerned lot of kit that is available you know that we don't need to go for the cytology let's say for example uh, we just directly go for uh, dna testing and and the interesting part is i have seen a, a couple of kits that is available in the indian market through indian distributor also within the same kit your dna extraction will be done so collection and dna extraction has been done in the same kit now in the same same uh, time and then detection can be done on the real time pcr and can be reported actually so okay. in that case we really don't need a wet lab what right. we need we have a mobile uh, van with us hmm. if we plug in our real time pcr let's say in that van and that collection kit and extraction has been done right away in the van itself we can put it on this real time pcr and we can generate the report in the field itself so i can i can assist on that part as well because that approach has been critically reviewed by me keeping in mind that lbc is little uh, you know uh, expensive in terms not in the terms of kit only i'm talking as a holistic approach yes, because we need uh, expertise to evaluate that slide under the microscope hmm. and that is that need a special pre analytical processing part before the reporting actually so as a whole package that part is really expensive whether you go for the liquid based cytology or hpv dna testing or co testing what what i'm talking about their high throughput uh, kits are available where collection and uh, extraction can be done in the real time over there itself with the same camp and you can detect uh, with the help of this uh, technology and then you can report right away you don't have to really wait for anyone to you know give something but you just need to train one resource person Uh, among us, and that can be taken care of. So that training part can be initiated uh, with the help of uh, the service provider uh, that we have in India. And a uh, couple of months back, you can say last three months back, I was having meeting with that resource person with uh, me, and they are importing that kit to India, and we are looking ahead uh, to go with those kind of uh, pilot study as well, where. Uh, we are going to reduce the dependency of lab in remote area at least hmm. where uh, we don't have enough access to uh, you know uh, technical expertise like uh, pathologist experienced pathologist or uh, molecular biologist over there so those kit is going to be a game changer in near future yeah if you can have a kit like that then it's definitely yeah. a game changer we, that should have that kit is already into the existence and uh, we just need to do some pilot study and need to install one real time pcr in our van itself and within the camp we can generate the report over there itself wonderful yep we have a test done point of care yes at, at it's the same kind of approach because 
uh, uh, point of care what is mean in pandemic time we really don't want to correct take anything from that original ecosystem to anywhere right. uh, uh, by adopting any logistic part so if we right away with our team with all uh, the resources that is required to generate the report right away at the field actually let's say if you're going to select 30 to 65 hmm. age group hmm. whoever is under that bracket let us say we have to do that we DNA testing as a primary screening and we can generate the report right away and we can say this is what your report is in in population what whatever the uh, study is there four to six percent positivity rate is there so let us assume five percent in uh, in general out of hundred so that five percent we will see whether that infection with the high risk group or low risk group hmm. even if it is the low risk group we don't have really bother about let's wait and watch and it will kill away the body even if it is the high risk group we need to see what are the other uh, infections are there not how long it will take to clear by the body because we have seen a very good uh, regression rate even if it is infected with the high risk positive, hmm. if not by 16 and 18. So in first vote, what we will do, according to WHO, uh, we will adopt this technology and we'll do some pilot study. Let's see uh, it, if it's going to help us uh, to take a decision right away at the right time at the, in that camp itself. So th that will be, I think, uh, uh, really, you know, uh, yeah. helpful for us to reduce the cost as well as reduce the time also, reporting time, the Correct. turnaround time actually. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Thank, yeah, thank you. I think Parul wants to ask something. Parul, you want to go ahead? Uh, uh, thank you, doctor, for uh, sharing such uh, knowledgeable insights over this topic. I just wanted to know a thing that if uh, some... So uh, if... A per, if a uh, organization such as Cape it, they install an artificial into their uh, van, then what is the turnaround time for each sample to have the results? Okay. So turnaround time is uh, two to two and a half hours from sample collection to the reporting. Uh, for uh, each sample? Uh, each sample. Uh, I, I mean, we, we can uh, definitely, we are going to run in the batch. So let's say uh, in a single go, we can go up to uh, nine, I mean, 96 number of tests, excluding uh, controls. So uh, let's say one positive control, one negative control, whatever is there with the kit that I need to go, uh, you know, the technical part in detail. But mm -hmm. what I can see, I just exclude the positive control in that batch, 96 minus those control, let's say two, three controls are there including known positive samples that we usually run in the entire batch. So mm -hmm. 96 minus, let's say four, five, six, whatever, you know. Okay. Uh, so 90 sample, you can report within uh, two to half hours of the time by adopting this uh, strategy uh, right away uh, uh, within, you know, uh, this van actually, uh, the mobile screening van that we have right now with us. Okay. And if, if, if uh, these self-sampling kits are distributed, two women at their home or where, wherever they reside. So mm -hmm. how much time should be there uh, between collecting the sample and then reporting to the nearest um, uh, hospital or nearest center where they would be tested? I mean, it's, it's not a general statement, uh, technically. Uh, the reason behind that, we, we all have seen um, uh, the geographical location that that India is like you know it's a vast country. The different different uh, uh, temperatures are there. Humidity. No, no, there. I'm, I'm, I'm. I was just, I'm just wondering. That, to, yeah, I'm just coming yeah. to your question. So in general, as soon as possible, irrespective of location or uh, the weather okay. condition or humidity and all. Okay. But in general, uh, what I'm talking about is uh, this sample is quite a stable weeks time even if uh, close to 40 degree of uh, temperature, if it is not exposed directly to the sunlight. So these, these are the very ba basic few things that we need to educate to, uh, or, you know, through different uh, approach, through short videos or through diagram or through kit insert within the self sampling, what are the precautions that need to take? And usually nobody, uh, nobody want to keep sample for a long time to be honest so within mm -hmm. 24 hours we will recommend to ship it back to the nearest center or uh, to us uh, to the NGO uh, uh, office and all and we then we can take care of that part. Okay 
Thank you so much. Yeah. And one more thing I would like to add over here is, even if uh, someone uh, unable to ship the, you know, uh, or the lab that is there, unable to ship uh, the sample to that, they, that then two to eight degree freeze is easily available in most of the lab. And that sample can be stored for a month also, if due to any reason, you know, if you're unable to receive sample from any remote area. So oh, that, that, can, that can also be done. Okay. And you can keep it for a long time, minus 20, minus 80, go on like, you know, different, different temperatures that the storage condition will, uh, you know, keep on changing. And uh, I mean, that is not the issue in case of at least HPV DNA testing, because uh, we have seen like one week of time is more than enough to, to generate a report and do the testing uh, after the sample collection. Okay. Any more questions? I guess no. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Niaz, for taking out time from your busy schedule and giving us such informative session. I hope everyone else also found this session informative. Thank you. Thank you, you, Dr. Niaz. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Niaz. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you so Dr. Niaz. Thank you.